Canada is blessed with an abundance of fresh water. With many thousands of lakes and rivers, Canada has one of the greatest supplies of fresh water on the planet. More than 40 years ago, Canadian scientists had the foresight to recognize the growing pressures on our most precious resource. But research being done in the lab also needed to be tested and replicated in the real world. And so began the work of ELA, the Experimental Lakes Area. When I was a young man, uh, the biggest issue in the environment, and I was interested in the environment, was the, the fact that Lake Erie had turned piece of green. And some scientists said, well, it had to do, it was called eutrophication, it had to do with uh, phosphorus being discharged into the lake. But it was much disputed because, you know, how do you change a whole giant great lake into a green soup? Um, it must be more than that, people thought. But no, uh, it, it turns out because we, they set up the experimental lakes area in northwestern Ontario and they did, for the first time, whole lake, whole eco lake ecosystem research and experiments, and they were able to demonstrate that it was the phosphorus, the element phosphorus discharged in the lakes that was causing eutrophication, and that science is the basis of pollution control all around the world to this day. The ELA, made up of 58 lakes in northwestern Ontario, has welcomed scientists from around the world. It remains the only research site on the planet where aquatic researchers use whole lakes and their ecosystems to test the effects of human impacts, such as pollution. I'd say if there's one single outstanding feature of all the studies that we've done at ELA is that the results from the whole ecosystem experiments typically were very different than what you would have predicted based on small-scale experiments. And it's important to recognize that uh, working functioning ecosystems involve thousands, of, tens of thousands of interactions. And it's impossible to capture all of those, those things in a laboratory or even a bag experiment setting. Experimental lakes area research has contributed enormously to government and industry measures that have protected lakes and rivers, safeguarded human health, and helped solve problems like acid rain. Uh, more recently, they've provided very good information on the way climate change is likely to affect those northern lakes and on the way in which uh, toxic chemicals like mercury uh, cycle through the ecosystem. In 2012, the federal government announced it would no longer operate ELA as a federal research facility. This prompted grassroots campaigns to save the ELA. In 2013, the International Institute for Sustainable Development, a Winnipeg-based research institute with partnerships around the globe, began looking at how to maintain this irreplaceable research area. I was really pleased when I heard that the International Institute for Sustainable Development was taking on the Experimental Lakes Area as a project. It's a great fit. The ELA has been around for a long time, since the 60s, and, then, and there's been some marvelous research done there, and it's accomplished great things. So we know about eutrophication, acid rain, toxics, and movement in the ecosystems. It's a wonderful facility. The International Institute for Sustainable Development, or IISD, is a charitable organization founded nearly 25 years ago. IISD is a leader in applied research, advancing environmental and sustainability solutions in Canada and around the world. Freshwater research is one of the Institute's core areas of work. Research at the Experimental Lakes area is becoming even more important today. Lakes and rivers are subject to new pressures like climate change, and the ELA can provide scientific evidence to inform policies on large-scale resource development projects like oil sands, mining, and others. There are so many unanswered questions, such as how do tailings ponds impact downstream waterways? How do we remediate the degraded and destroyed wetlands? How do we clean up oil spills when pipelines break or rail cars go off the track? And going forward, we still face international challenges in sustainability and in the environment. And the ELA is located in the boreal. And the boreal is the region of the world, the cross circum circumpolar around the planet that is under the greatest pressure. And here we have the, a world-class facility in the boreal that is in a situation where we can do science to answer some of the key questions that will mitigate the impacts 
of, of our need for minerals and forestry and the fact that this tremendous ecosystem is under climate change pressure. IISD continues to work behind the scenes with the governments of Canada, Ontario and Manitoba to keep this national treasure open. In August 2013, it signed an interim partnership agreement to keep the research going. More work needs to be done through the fall and winter to find a permanent arrangement for the experimental lakes, including securing funds to keep a world-class group of scientists together. I hope that this will give us an opportunity to work directly with communities and uh, with people that are familiar with, with the communities to, to come up with workable solutions in the real world. This is a time to think big. This is a time to dream. This is a time to make ELA bigger and better. But we can't do this alone. Uh, if ELA were to close, uh, a, a very important type of science would be lost to Canada and to, to the world. To learn more, please check out IISD.org.